logged in on a computer in the computer lab, press the Windows key on the keyboard and type Creative Cloud. And when the best match is Adobe Creative Cloud, press Enter to start it. You don't need to sign in with your full email address initially, just type the domain name, kth.se. And then when Adobe knows that it's KTH, that's the entity that it has licensed software to, you can type in your credentials. When you are logged in, you can simply close the Creative Cloud application here, press the Windows key on your keyboard and type Illustrator. Open Adobe Illustrator. Very good. The next thing that we should do is to download the template file for Illustrator. I think that the easiest way to do this is to start any browser. Go to dfl for digital fabrication lab dot kthcnc.se and then navigate to the folder that's called Illustrated Templates and then download the laser cutter template file. Very good. When it is open, you can simply click Open File and it opens in Illustrator. Very good. And with the illustrated template, you can simply follow these instructions uh, for the vector laser cutter paradigm. If you want to do a raster engraving, then it's a different paradigm. But this will be for the vector laser cutting paradigm. Uh, Alright, so let's open our exported file. If you open File Explorer and go to di the directory where you have, show where you have uh, saved it, and it was this one, then you can simply click and drag that to the upper part of the viewport here, or the user interface. Here we need to make sure that we have a workspace that allows us to see all the necessary information here. So let's make sure that we click Window, Workspace, and you can select Typography Workspace. It works good. And then in the Layers pane to the right, you press the three horizontal bars here, the Options, and make sure that Paste Remembers Layers is set to Active. Otherwise the layer information will not be copied when you paste it. All right. And then uh, with all the objects here, if you hold space and uh, the left mouse button key, you can pan the view here. And if you hold control and press A, and then you can control C to copy and switch to the template document here and control V to paste. And now since we had the paste remembers layers, we have the layers here uh, copied as well. Very good. And now that we have all of the objects still selected, if we would not have by clicking in the canvas or in the void here, uh, we can hold control and press A on the keyboard to select everything. And then you see the thin line uh, constitutes the bounding box of the selected objects. And if you go up here, you can see that you can pick a reference point for whatever, it, whatever is selected and the bounding box of it. So now we select the upper left reference point for the bounding box and then we can either input 0 for the x value and 0 for the y value, which makes the object, uh, we can hide the information layer here, uh, which makes the object uh, co aligned to the edge here. But we want to have at least 3 millimeters, and it can be good with 3 to 5, so perhaps 4 millimeters of margin here. So 4 millimeters of margin. Very good. With everything still selected, make sure that there are no clipping groups, no compound paths and no groups. This is most easily achieved by having all the objects selected and go to objects and then make sure that the ungroup option is grayed out, there are no groups to be ungrouped, that there are no clipping masks to be released and that there are no compound paths to be released as well. Very good. Then we may have made sure that there is a flat hierarchy of paths. One can also verify this by expanding the layers here with the arrow key and then see that everything is just paths. Very good. With everything still selected, make sure that none of the objects have a fill color assigned to it. And you see that that's, uh, if it's a red diagonal line, that means that everything has a fill color of none. There is no fill color assigned to any of these objects. Also make sure that all curves have an opacity of exactly 100%. If it is not at 100%, then the object might not be processed by the laser cutter at all. Make sure that all objects for the vector laser cutting paradigm have a stroke thickness of 0 0.001 points, 1 thousandths of a point. Very good. As evident here, when we click in the void or in the canvas, this makes the object very, very 
hard to discern, their visibility is very low, so if you would need to work further with this, you can of course temporarily set this to perhaps 1.0.35 millimeters as a stroke thickness, so as you see the objects, but make sure before you save the file that this is actually 0 0.001, one thousandth of a point. With everything still selected, make sure either you find the stroke here, and if it's not visible, you can go to Window and Stroke, Make sure that everything is continuous. Simply sh make sure that this is unchecked for everything. There should no, be no dash checkpoints there for the dashed line. It should be completely empty. If you do have dashed lines and want to uh, laser cut these as dashed lines, then you will need to expand those objects. And you can do this by having them selected, go to objects and expand, and expand only the stroke. And then you will need to make sure that the uh, fill color is none and that the uh, stroke color is uh, appropriately set and that the line thickness of that is 0 0.001 points. Very good. Now that the previous steps are verified, the final step is to verify that all curves have their correct color values assigned to them. And as you see here in the right hand pane, there are different colors for different uh, types of operations. Yellow for lightly etching, cyan for medium etching and magenta for a darker etching, blue for etching with a dotted line, green to cut through the material and to do this first and red to cut through the material and doing this afterwards. You don't need to assign your curves into these layers. There is no relationship between which layer an object is in and how it will be processed by the laser cutter, but it is the color value of the stroke. The final step is to assign proper color values to all of the curves here. And when you export from Rhino, you get the layer information and you also uh, have uh, the colors already assigned here, as you can see here in green and red. But those color values are not necessarily the exact color values of the laser cutter preset. And you will have to make sure that they are. And the easiest way to do this is to select the layer, the green layer here in this instance, and then change from the Rhino exported green value here to the preset, the uh, predefined swatch green here. That is the correct one for laser cutter processing. Very good. And then do the same for the other one. So just click the circle for the red layer here and then change that red to a uh, predefined red there. Very good. And now, having gone through all of these steps, you have now successfully prepared the document for laser cutting at KTH Architect School. You will still need to prepare the material before entering the DFL at your booked time slot. Save this file, save it on your computer, and save it in an appropriate directory. Perhaps we can borrow the name of this and then just assign a suffix ready for DFL and save it. Very good. And then in the DFL you open this file and it is fully prepared document-wise for laser cutting.